My name is Antonika and this is my tiny home. It's called the Magnolia, but I call it the Chic Wellness House. So come on in and take a look. So welcome to my kitchen. This is where I spend a lot of my time. Um, this is a very nice kitchen because I like to do videos and so I will oftentimes lay out my food here, talk here, and then I have the beautiful view of the farm behind me and all of my appliances. When I um, saw this kitchen, I thought, wow, this is exactly what I would like to have because it allows me to have like conversation and have someone sitting on one side while I'm sitting here in the kitchen, so it's kind of like a country style. But the one thing that I don't use very often is the oven. The oven is pretty much my storage space. I got an air fryer because it cuts cooking time in half and it's just easier for me to cook with an air fryer. So basically all my pots and pans are stored in the oven. Um, back here I have my juicer which I use pretty often. We don't have a microwave here. I don't like microwaves and so when this didn't come with a microwave I was pretty happy that um, I didn't have to waste that extra space. But I love the little small pocket uh, windows because I'm learning how to propagate plants and um, in between trips I'll take snippets of like basil and aloe and put them in my jars so I can propagate them and put them out in the garden just beside my home. I like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen but because of my lifestyle I travel a lot so the time that I spend in the kitchen is very little. When I get up in the morning, I'll make a shake from the containers that I have up in here, put in some water, and uh, just drink that, and that's my breakfast. And then I immediately go outside because that's where I like to spend my mornings. Um, the cool thing about this is that I have learned through Instagram that there are quite a few tools that I could use to make more functionality of the kitchen. And one of them is putting a, um, a cutting board here, which gives me more counter space. So what I'll normally do is I'll do something like this, and then that'll allow me to do chopping here while I'm prepping and doing some other work here, which is really cool. Um, I This home actually was a home that was designed to be a model, and so when I when we got it, my family and I got it, I didn't really know what I was getting into other than the fact that it wasn't something that I could customize. And so I've had to really learn how to um, move things in and, and kind of move things around. And so I've had to downsize quite a bit in order to fit things into the cupboard space. So the cupboard space here is a lot. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty normal for a single person. And I love the counter space here because it allows me to display my Polish pottery, which is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, and then, you know, a lot of my collective little things, it kind of gives it that country style look, which is um, what we were going for when I decided to move here on the farm. love living in a small space and I love it because it keeps me very disciplined and I like to be disciplined. Um, it just keeps me focused on what my purpose in life is and it keeps me on that path. I don't have a whole lot of distractions and that is important to me because when I'm working and I'm doing things and I'm traveling I want to be fully engaged in that process where, versus worrying about having to mow the lawn or having to you know do things around the house so I feel like being here and allowing myself to just kind of like live in a smaller space just makes life simple you know I have nice clothes and then I get rid of nice clothes and then I find you know unique ways to give to people who maybe need what I don't need anymore and it really brings the community in for me too because if I need something and I don't have it, like a paper shredder, because I needed a paper shredder once, I just went down to my neighbor and they're like, hey, I've got one. And so I used her paper shredder instead. So I, I like that. It makes me have to get up and ask and you know, be in community and to talk to other people about you know, the things that I need. So welcome to the living room. It's shared with the kitchen and it's a really nice living room for a family to enjoy. Um, this is a couch that pulls out into a, a bed, so it's basically like a king-size bed. I just 
pull it out and it um, comes right up. So that's really nice for like days when I have friends over or I just want to like lazy on the couch and, and watch TV. And then there's like this pocket for the television. I hardly watch TV, by the way. So normally I'll put like some pictures up there or something nice and tranquil, play some really nice classical music. Um, I haven't really quite put a whole bunch of pictures on the wall just yet because I just haven't been here long enough or often enough to do that. So it's really like a blank canvas for me. I don't really spend a whole lot of time here too. I spend most of my time up in the office, in the kitchen and outside because I have the wraparound porch, which we'll get to later. Um, I have sectioned off this poem, this area here with the curtain to kind of like give some privacy and to kind of allow, you know, the space to, you know, be sectioned off. And so this allows me to get privacy whenever I'm in the shower or whenever I have friends over and they're upstairs or they're downstairs. So that's what I've done. Maybe in the future I'll think of something more um, presentable, but for now the curtain works quite easily. If I could change anything about the space here, I would really want to make more functionality with the wall space. So I used to work on private yachts and there's this one yacht build called Lursens and they're German build and everywhere you go there's like little cubby holes and really nice little areas where you can put things and so I would put like a drawer here or maybe even put drawers in here into the wall and just really make it a place to where I can have more storage space because when you're living in a tiny home, you do run out of storage space. And this tiny home can actually sleep, what, six people? So when you're living with like maybe, you know, four kids and two adults, you might need a little bit more places to, to put things. Um, and then I would also consider like furniture where I can, you know, put things underneath. This one fortunately has a space underneath the, the couch where I can store some things which is helpful, but I would want to use, I would want to get more furniture that has that storage space in it as well. So this is my loungy place. Whenever I have friends over, family over, they sit on that side, I sit on this side. It's just a very comfortable space. The pillow just stays here for comfort. Um, I can take it up and it's just like, you know, a nice place to sit, but it's kind of like um, one of those perches that you would have but with, by the window, but instead it's the in between the two lofts. And so it's very comfortable. I'll sit here and I'll read a book or um, have a cup of tea or, you know, just admire the space that I live in. It's pretty, it's a pretty comfortable spot to sit. So this corridor here is where my closet is and it's where the washer and dryer is. The thing about the washer and dryer is that it beeps and I can't seem to figure out how to get the beeping off of it. So when I'm sleeping at night and I'm doing laundry at night, I hear this beeping sound. I have to get up in the middle of the night and, untake and open the door to turn it off. Um, I'm very used to Miele washer and dryers. They're much smaller and compact. This is it's decent. It works. I don't have a hamper. I just put everything in the wash machine and these days if it's mixed, it's mixed and it's okay. And I just take out a lot of my clothes and I just hang dry them. I use this space here by um, using these containers to put my laundry detergent, my toilet paper, my paper towels. And it's just a nice, neat way to stack, to tuck things away. And then I can just pull it down and get what I want and then put it back up there. Um, so this is a, an area that I use very often. I'm kind of always going back and forth. Um, here and here is the closet. And this is where most of my clothes are. And uh, it's actually pretty spacious, the closet. And it's nice because I can open this up, close the curtain, and then still have more privacy with the curtain closed and the door open or vice versa. Um, so there's lots of ways to get privacy in here. So let's go into the bathroom. So the one thing that I love about the bathroom are these pocket doors. Everywhere that I've lived, I've, even, I've never had pocket doors. But the bathroom is pretty much just a very basic bathroom. It wasn't customized. If I had it my way, I would definitely customize it so I can have more counter space um, for, the, for the sink and also more cabinet space. Like there's a lot of empty spaces at the top and this is an empty space here. I would have much preferred to have the cabinet extended over to here so I can have more cabinet space. So this is really difficult considering that I share the space with my family from time to time. Their things are in here, my things are in here, and we only have two cupboard spaces to put our things in. The shower is great though. I love the shower. It's a, it's not a bathtub, but it, it works and um, it's just very easy to clean. And so we put our things in here and we just clean it up really quickly, you squeegee it off and we hang our towels here. So it's just super simple, clean and no fuss. I did put a privacy 
um, like, I guess, paper here just uh, recently because that wasn't there. And I just wanted more light in the bathroom. There wasn't a whole lot of light, but I also didn't want people to see me in the bathroom. So it's nice to be able to raise the shades and still have light and have this nice, um, you know, design because I'm into sacred geometry. So that's what it reminds me of. I have always, you know, traveled the world since I was a kid. My dad was military and downsizing was always a thing. We couldn't take everything with us. And so over the years, I've realized that, you know, if I still want to continue seeing the world, then I have to learn to just be more of a minimalist. So this actually happened on accident. When I finished one of my last contracts on uh, a cruise ship, I worked, I worked on private um, cruise ships and private yachts, I uh, wanted to live the van life. I wanted to get in a van and travel the country and just have that kind of lifestyle. And then COVID happened. And so I ended up working with a client in home for six months and I, my home in Florida was already rented out and I had no place to go. So my parents and I put our heads together and we were like, okay, what are we going to do? My parents also travel. We have a freight brokerage company and they're cross country all the time. And we just really needed a place to hang our hat in between our contracts and in between work life. So they found this place while they were here during COVID on a contract and they said, Antonika, you're going to absolutely love it here. It's on a farm. It's exactly up your alley with holistic medicine. Um, it's just, it just suits you. It's, there's a one with the wraparound porch. They just really shared with me all of the great things about it. And I said, you know, whatever it takes, let's do it. I wasn't too crazy about moving to Texas because I love the ocean, but when I saw the farm and I saw the potential and the community and the country home, I just thought, I, I can do this. I definitely can do this. So I arrived with literally two suitcases, and over time, I just kept on going back and forth to Florida to get more things you know, in between contracts, and that's how I was able to furnish the rest of the house. And so it's been, um, it's been a process over the past year. I spend about three to four months a year here, and then my parents will come and they'll spend, you know, three or four months here. So we see each other and then we go off on our way. Um, it's been easy transitioning into tiny home lifestyle because when you work on a cruise ship and on private yachts, you're already living in small spaces anyways. And as a yachty, we just learn to keep things very tidy and organized and out of the way. And we are very good at getting rid of things. It's not easy, but we, we can make it happen. So on ships, my, my living accommodation was probably the same size as the master bedroom. And that's where the bathroom is, where my vanity would be, where I would get up, where my desk is. And that is my living quarters. So being here compared to what I used to live on on ships, this is kind of like a mansion. <laughs> so welcome to the main bedroom, the master bedroom. This is a queen size bed. It would probably be impossible to fit a king size bed. But if it were my choice, I would have probably just gotten a full so that I can have more space to maneuver around in since it's just me. Um, the wonderful thing about this space is that there is quite a bit of storage space in here. You've got two closets that are like, they look like barn doors, so I love the style of that. And I use one closet for, you know, storing my towels and my um, cleaning things like my broom and, you know, extra tables to pull out whenever I have guests. And then up top here, this is where I store my suitcases because I'm constantly traveling and I need to have access to them at any one time. So sometimes I'll put one suitcase into another and then we, we have all of our suitcases up there. Um, there's only about six drawers here that are accessible for us to put clothes in, but I've made a lot of use for the storage space that's under the bed. 
Now, what I would recommend is that, you know, to get a bed that's a little higher and then maybe create some drawers so you can have more storage space under the bed. So I kind of have like things for the kitchens, kind of like a little box with my pantry that's stored under the bed. And I have um, some other things that are like my gym equipment that I store under the bed because I use this outside space for, for working out. So in this space, I have big storage space and small storage space. And it's nice to have a little bit of both because I can hang my clothes here and I can really just be creative with the storage space. So buying boxes, shelves and whatnot. So this is kind of like the in-between from a house to a tiny home, hopefully one day to a van so I can see the world, but it's a nice in-between. Um, so this is kind of like a vanity. I use it not only just for getting ready in the mornings, but sometimes I'll just prop up my computer here if I've got guests staying with me and I just kind of need some privacy. But the wonderful thing that I love about this place is that these are French doors. And so when it's a lot cooler in Texas, I can open up the French doors and just have a, a wider open space with these doors here. So this is the loft. I can't stand up completely because, you know, the way that it's built, there's only about four or four and a half feet for me, but this is a perfect space to sleep in. I don't feel claustrophobic in here at all. Um, the only thing about this space is I had to create some privacy curtains. So that way when, you know, I have my family here, I have a little bit of privacy. Um, also next to me, my neighbor is just like literally right there and I can see into their window. They can see into mine. So I'm looking forward to putting some privacy, you know, um, film up there to still have a light but have privacy. Um, in this space, there isn't really any storage space. And that's why I have to make use of the storage space downstairs in the closet. If I were to do this over again, I would suggest putting storage space either in the wall or build it to where you can have a little storage space kind of here, like I've seen in other, you know, vans and tiny homes. Um, so... Another thing too, you know, it could be a bed that has a thinner mattress. This is a complete mattress. So it could be a bed with a smaller foam with some storage space underneath. Um, it gets pretty warm in here and I have to run the air conditioning so that because heat rises. And so that's the only downfall in the winter, in the summertime, it's just like so hot. Um, another thing too is like the lights in here, it's a really pretty light that when they're turned on, and it's very bright, but because it's a bedroom, I would have much preferred to have dimmers. And because the, the, the home wasn't built for dimmers, the whole electrical system has to be replaced in order to make that possible. So when the lights are on, it gets pretty warm in here. So I don't even turn them on. I just keep them off. Um, this right here is a biomat. It's really for health benefit purposes. It's got tourmaline and amethyst crystals that heat up the body's temperature. So in the winter time when it's really cold or if I'm just feeling a little achy or if just not feeling um, very good, I'll just either roll out of bed or come up and lay on here for about 20, 30 minutes and that will help my body just, you know, you know, fix itself and, and feel better. So now we're going to go to the other loft. There's two spaces. Um, and this is where I spend most of my time. So this is my office and I love it up here because I'll wake up in the morning, grab my breakfast, come out here, sit at my desk and I've got a few different ways that I sit. Here in this gaming chair, I'll also grab like a yoga block and I'll sit in the yoga block. But the nice thing about being here is that I can go from sitting at my desk and just put out a yoga mat and do some stretching and do a little bit of yoga. So what I've done is I have lots of pillows here so I can just kind of like maybe take a nap in between, you know, Zoom calls and a little guitar to kind of like help me break away from, you know, the monotony of being on the computer all day. I've also set up like a little bit of a, of a shrine here with my crystals and so I can pray for my patients that I take care of and just, you know, really maintain that space of meditation and that mindset um, to help me get through the day. And then I have all of my medical books here. I don't have a bookshelf case or anything like that. I just, I'm happy with them here on the floor. They just look fine for me there. And there's really not enough space up here to put any floating shelves or any decor. So everything that you see here, I use. And it's just very functional for me. Um, I'll do videos up here. And this is a great desk that works well for me because... I can raise it up or I can, you know, bring it down. 
and it just it's just the elevation really helps with them um, sitting at the desk for a long period of time um, so I'm very self-sufficient up here and it doesn't bother me to be up here for eight hours a day tiny home community is just like being a home being at a home away from home um, everyone talks to each other we all welcome each other we're we're in a, a text messaging group that welcomes new people that come into the neighborhood and we're all very uh, connected so to speak and what connects us is the farm couple of days out of the week, the farm's open for volunteers to come out and to learn how to farm, learn how to propagate, and just learn how to live a very sustainable lifestyle. So it's beneficial for me to live on a farm where I know that I can get organic food and not have to worry about you know pesticides or having to get up and go to the grocery store to get food, to come home, to unpack it. I can just go out and go grab some kale or some broccoli or pick some peaches or whatnot. And it's just right there. So I love that part about it, and that is a very important part of my life because you know eating healthy and eating well is my whole practice. Um, some of the disadvantages are the politics. You know, when you have a property like this that's owned by an association, you know, there's a lot of things that are involved that you don't know about, you do know about. Things take a while to get done or accomplished, and it takes a while to get answers from somewhere. So you really want to do your homework in where you're going, where you're going to want to stay. Um, if I could, I can definitely pick up the home and put it on another plot of land, but then I wouldn't be in community. I would probably have to get solar panels, and it would be a lot of extra work. Whereas here, I can pick up, go away for two, three weeks, four weeks, and not have to worry about my home because... I've got security, but then I've also got my neighbors who can come around and water my plants. <laughs> so this style of home is interesting and different from all the others. It's the only home that has a wraparound porch. Now, this tiny home is 399 square feet, and it's on wheels. So at any time, I can pick up my home and go to another piece of property, but the deck would have to be taken apart. So I don't have like extra living space inside, but the extra living space outside makes up for the space that I don't have inside. I've got furniture to fit this area here, which is um, pretty nice because it w makes the space wider and it makes it more conversational. So I can entertain like all six people outside. Um, my little friend Millie always comes in and sees me. So this is a, a fire pit. I was a little worried about how it would fit here on the porch, but it works just fine. And uh, in Texas, it, we do get it does get pretty cold here, so that's going to come in handy. But you know, this is just a, a nice, comfortable space that fits this furniture and still have room to maneuver and walk around in. And of course, I've got the beautiful view of the farm, and then all the other, you know, nice things like petting this kitty cat. <laughs> Outside, I don't have a whole lot of storage space, so I had to be very creative. And so when the weather gets really bad, I have covers for the chairs and I have to put the, the covers underneath the chairs and maybe underneath the fire pit. And then I have like a box that I put things in that's on the other side where I'll put, you know, a grill and some other stuff. But I really like to use this space to propagate my plants when I'm home and to just be on the porch to, you know, look at the view whenever I'm working from my computer outside. So there's a lot of wind that comes through here because of the way that this is, you know, designed. Um, so, so I have the option to be out here in the front or out in the back. So let's go take a right look around, oops, around the other side of the property or the, the home. This walkway is really nice. Um, I plan to put plants here um, and have that, you know, to grow flowers and whatnot. But it's nice to be able to walk through this way. We get a nice breeze going through here, which is nice. And then, you know, if I want to kind of separate myself from other people who are out there in the front, I kind of just want to hang out here. I put this chair here so I can, you know, hang out and sit here and be on the computer or just, you know, meditate. Um, this is also my place, the place where I work out in. So I have my spin bike and I'll come out here and I'll work on my, work out on my spin bike. 
for a little bit, and then I'll also do my TRX and my yoga here as well. So this is a very functional space that I use often, and it's nice that this space is separate from the space that's in the front. So you can tell, like, it doesn't matter if you've got, you know, six people in your family or two people in your family, you could still get quite a bit of privacy in this amount of space. My favorite thing about this space is how close I am to the raised beds. In our community, we have raised beds that everyone pitches in and takes care of. And uh, so every morning I'll get up and I'll have a look and I'll tend to the raised beds and I'll cut some leaves off and harvest some, you know, zucchini or tomatoes or cucumbers and it's just nice to be able to wake up and have this view and to see that you know not only can I live in a very tiny space but I can just go out and get like you know some quick vegetables and bring them in the home wash them up and, and eat them and then it's also nice because my neighbors will come around and they'll start working in the yard and I'll have a you know cute little conversation with them and you know ask how they're doing so it brings in community by having that space here right next to my home. So my whole mission and vision in life is to provide a way and a, an experience for people to live a more sustainable life and to live a more healthier life and to gain health independence. And so I treat the body's innate ability to heal using energy medicine, acupuncture, um, meditation, essential oils, food therapy. It's all within the branches of Chinese medicine. And you know, people who are learning about how to be healthy, they can, you know, learn from me by following me on Instagram at um, tcm.chic.wellness or you can visit my website at chicwellness.org. In my community, I like to partner with other acupuncturists and other health professionals because I want to be able to share with others that you know, life is meant to be enjoyed and you're designed to live a purposeful life. And if we're constantly, you know, stressed out because of work, then we're not living life on purpose. And this is definitely a way that we can accomplish that. Living small, focusing on our goals and focusing on our dreams and our vision and being in community. We need each other and that is why I'm here. So, you know, I'm so glad that I get to show you the space and that um, maybe you might be considering moving into a tiny home and it's just an incredible experience and if you're afraid to do it then go chase after your fears and just make it happen. You will never regret the experience of doing it and you might find a lot of neat discoveries along the way. Thanks so much for joining me.